Hello everybody, welcome back to another video as today we got another episode of the Peyton on the Radio podcast as today is episode 6 and uh, while this episode we got a lot of cool stuff, well not cool stuff but a lot of crazy stuff that we're going to be talking about. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Mitchell Miller stuff and him signing with the Boston Bruins and then being dropped by the team, we're going to be getting into that today. Uh, we're also going to be talking about... Uh, you know, some rumors that have gone on in the NHL with maybe Bo Horvat and also not just that. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly might be on the training block as well. And we're going to be getting into some of the teams, some of the players that I've been really kind of taking an eye on and the power rankings as well. So uh, let's get into this. But before I do, I'd like to just say if you're watching this here on YouTube, uh, if you are new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that like button as well. And make sure to go check out the Spotify and Apple podcasts as this podcast is out on there as well. So make sure to go give it a follow and uh, maybe even give it a five star rating as well and write a great ass review. And maybe I'll read it on the next episode of the podcast as well. So that'll be very much appreciated there, guys. So let's get into this bad boy here with the, uh, you know, Mitchell Miller. This is the very first thing I want to talk about. Uh, and I wanted to say if I, I know Isaiah might not be watching this, but uh, stay strong, buddy. Uh, you'll be able to get through whatever you're going to go through. Uh, what happened to you was absolutely disgusting. Uh, we're going to be getting into all that. So basically, way back uh, when Mitchell Miller was the age of 14, um, Mitchell Miller bullied uh, Isaiah Meyer, Meyer Cuthers for years. Uh, now, uh, Isaiah is black and has a developmental uh, disability, so learning disabilities. And basically, we're going to be talking about what Isaiah posted uh, called him brownie, called him the N-word, you know, t tipped a fucking lollipop in a urinal and made Isaiah lick it. Uh, it is absolutely disgusting what Mitchell did to him when he was younger. Uh, and a lot of people are bringing up the fact that, you know, he's 14. He shouldn't have to deal with the consequences when he was, you know, at the age of 14. And quite honestly, I do believe in that as well. You know, I think that, you know, as a 14 year old, you make mistakes and you should grow from it. But we haven't seen that yet from Mitchell Miller. Pure and simple. People are telling me that, you know, he's 14 and should be, you know, relinquished of everything. That's not the way that it is. If I was to do the exact same things, you know, you at least need to show that remorse and show that regret. And we have not seen that from Mitchell yet. We have not. Uh, we have simply have not seen that yet. It's absolutely disgusting what uh, Mitchell Miller did to Isaiah. And Isaiah hasn't been able to get over that. Uh, and it's honestly hard to get over what Isaiah was put through, uh, having to get tested for multiple sexually transmitted diseases because some kid made you lick a lollipop that was put in a urinal is absolutely disgusting. And who the fuck does that? You know, as a 14 year old, how do you even think of doing that to somebody's like to somebody it is absolutely horrible. So what happened this week is Mitchell Miller signed a contract with the Boston Bruins, which, well, the Bruins weren't happy with it. The players weren't happy. Uh, everybody in the world was not happy with this move and was disgusted by this signing by the Boston Bruins. The Boston Bruins did not talk to the victim's family at all, uh, which I thought was also disgusting. And apparently Mitchell Miller didn't apologize to Isaiah uh, until like a week after or something like that or was trying to yeah, get in contact with him in the middle of October. So a few weeks before this signing even happened. So Mitchell Miller, all he was doing was trying to apologize so he can, you know, tell the organizations like, oh, I'm improving. I've apologized to him. Even though you just apologized to him like fucking a few, like, I, I, it's fucking heartbreaking to me, man. It really is because I have a brother who is, has autism and the same shit happened. Uh, not as brutal as Isaiah, uh, but my brother got fucking bullied for years by a lot of hockey boys. And never once did they say sorry or anything. And my brother was, you know, went through a lot of shit because of the fact that those kids bullied my brother for years. And I was the only one who was able to kind of stop the bullying. But once I left, it got worse. And those kids just continued to pick on them because they are, I don't know, fucking so goddamn privileged that they just think that they can bully anybody that because they play hockey that they're bigger than anybody else even though they're fucking not 
And that's why this disgusts me so much. And people saying that, oh, just because he's a 14-year-old, you know, he can't fucking be living with this for the rest of his life. Yes, he can. If he's not going to show the remorse and actually apologize to the person, then he deserves to live with this for the rest of his life and deserves not to play another goddamn game of hockey again. To be quite simple with you, it is disgusting why, you know, I get it. If he's actually showing that remorse and actually doing that work to, you know, actually make you know, just try to get over this and show remorse and show improvement, but we're not seeing that from Miller. He's just trying to get another fucking contract in hockey and ignore this and push it past just by apologizing. Let's get into the statement that Isaiah posted because this was the biggest one. I really liked to read it and kind of tell you guys now. Uh, there's a lot of graphic information, so I just want to let you guys know, and I forgot to say that even before the lollipop one, but... Uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of graphic information talking about this whole segment. So uh, this is uh, from Isaiah's own words because Barstool, uh, who fucking likes Barstool? But uh, basically, Isaiah's mother has been the big voice in this whole conversation and the big driver. She was posting a few DMs and stuff like that with a few people. And people were like, oh, what? why are we hearing from Isaiah? Why are we hearing from Isaiah? Like, I, I just don't understand that that thought process that you know, a mother being the main vocal cord for her son and trying to stand up for her son because most likely the son doesn't feel very comfortable in standing up for himself in this situation. And especially like the way that my brother was, the mother is going to mostly step up for the son. That's just the way things go. Aren't you that fucking stupid that you don't think that? It just blows my mind, man. It blows my mind the way that some people think. And for a verified person to even try to almost stand with Miller was absolutely disgusting. But well, let's get into this. I'm Isaiah My uh, Meyer Cuthers, and I'd like to make a statement. I've been bullied since I was in gra uh, first grade. There was not many black kids at my school, and I was called Brownie and the N-word. Uh, kids said my black mom and dad didn't love me, and that's why I had white parents. Mitchell used me and asked, asked me to sit with him on the bus, and then he he and his friends would punch me in the head. This happened my whole time in school. When I went to junior high, Mitchell would spit in my face and call me the N-word. I stopped telling, telling because they called me a snitch and I would get made fun of. I had to say his N to sit at his table and he made me clean the whole table. He threw food at me and I was called the N-word every day. The office uh, would tell me to stay away from him because he wasn't my friend. Once he got expelled from my school, his friends started bullying me. He pretended to, uh, pretended to be my friend and made me do things I didn't want to do. In junior high, I got beat up by him. Everyone thought he was cool. But I don't see how someone can be cool when they pick on someone and bully someone your entire life. Middle of October, I was texted constantly every day until I answered a Snapchat and IG message from Mitchell Miller. He asked me why I was always have my parents doing stuff for me and why I can't uh, why can't I speak for myself? I told him I don't care what my parents say. I'm not old enough to speak for myself. He told me he was sorry and that apology uh, apology uh, apology didn't involve hockey. He told me he was doing stuff in the community and helping the youth and wanted to be my friend. I told him that's cool, but where is all the proof though? He didn't give me any proof. All the lies I've been told uh, been told from him for so many years, I don't believe what Mitchell told me. He kept asking me to be his friend and that he has changed over the years from what he did. I told him, I'm not going to be your friend after all you did. I'm now going to get messages on social media from, I'm now getting messages from people on social media calling me a slow, retarded ass clown and you stupid N-word saying that I need help. Mitchell is my friend and it hurts my heart what he did to me. So I just wanted to tell everyone when Mitchell says we are friends, it isn't true. And I can't take more of this. That is the statement from Isaiah. Uh, and absolute disgusting. It really is absolutely disgusting. That's word for word. I'm going to put the link down in the description below uh, for this whole tweet as well. So if you guys want to read it yourself as well, uh, you guys can go ahead and uh, talk about it as well. Uh, it is, uh, it's really rough to read. It's tough to read because... You know, uh, my brother struggled through a lot of the same things uh, and, of course, didn't call it the N-word, of course. But uh, it's disgusting, you know, what these hockey guys will do to just pick on someone that's different 
or that looks different. Uh, and they will pick on them, beat up on them, everything in the book. Uh, it's disgusting that Mitchell Miller just messaged him in the middle of October and tried to make dues with him and tried to become friends with him. I hate that shit. I've heard that shit before. I've I've actually dealt with that type of thing from a crazy ex a long goddamn time ago. She's like, oh, can we be friends? It's like, dude, you just threw me to a ton of shit. Now you want to be friends? Like, dude, fuck you. Like, you just think that I can just forgive all the shit that you just threw me through. And now you just want to be friends. And that you think that one simple apology is enough to, you know, make do of everything that you did. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't. You have to simply gain that trust of that person again and make, you know, things to help forgive that person. You know, it takes time to heal wounds. It doesn't just fucking automatically put on a bandaid and it works, you know. And for the Boston Bruins to totally ignore talking with Isaiah, talking with the family or just about anything was absolutely ridiculous. And then for them to go back on the word like, oh, yeah, we didn't do any research. Dude, you're a fucking huge organization. How are you not doing a f research on this kid? How are you not looking into it? How are you not looking at the player? How are you not talking to your players who are on your team that don't want this guy in the team? It was absolute embarrassment and an absolute joke what we've seen from this. Horrible. Absolutely horrible what we've seen from this. It is disgusting and horrible. And and he has not apologized as well until he reached out to Isaiah over Instagram. And for me, that's not an apology. People will be like, oh, well, he apologized. It's over fucking Instagram, dude. It's a fucking text message. So are we really going to take a text message as a proper sorry? Are we Are we stupid? Like, you gotta at least either call the person or say it in fucking person. Because I think over text messages has no show of remorse, doesn't show anything. It's a text message. It's a text. You can't read emotion over a text message. A stupid little text message. And people are like, oh, you said it's sorry, so that means he's showing remorse. No, he's not, man. He's saying sorry so he can get another job, so he can play hockey again. That is what he's doing. This is simply what he is doing. He's saying sorry so he can play hockey again. That is what this is. I've seen it before. And I get, you know, he did it when he was 14, but he did it for years. And kept doing it. And kept doing it. And kept doing it. And he's showing no remorse. Nothing at all. It's disgusting what we have seen from Mitchell Miller. And honestly... From what I've seen, I don't think he really deserves to play hockey again unless he actually shows growth. But we have not seen that yet. We have simply haven't. And until that day, until we see that he actually has showed some remorse, has actually apologized to the guy, actually doing some work to make things meet and to show that he is actually sorry about what he has done, then he could play fucking hockey again. And I think the way that diversity, I, I, read another, I read another tweet by Hockey Diversity and people were like, oh, well, you're trying to cancel that person. This is something that I really thought Hockey Diversity Alliance really put together. And I'll put that other statement down in the description below as well. Some have talked about the concepts of counsel, not cancel, and restorative justice. Concepts which followed authentically and sincerely we at the HDA agree with. In this case, however, Miller and the team invoke these concepts out of convenience, a cynical means to an end. We must not allow such staged, managed reformation and apologies to suffi uh, suffi suffice, if I can speak English. Miller's signing provides an instructive example of these terms being weaponized to give cover to a bad actor. If he has been successful, others, uh, others down the line would have worked in the same playbook, uh, you know, the same thing would have happened if he just simply apologized and then moved on. It's not, it's not the way things work. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't just apologize and think that everything's going to wash away. And everything's going to be brand new and nothing's going to, you know, what happened in the past is going to magically go away. It doesn't work that, that way. Things take time to heal and you have to grow and just thinking that you could apologize and be, Oh yeah, you want to be friends, man. It's not, it's not going to work that way, Mitchell. It's simply not, buddy. And quite honestly, 
I think that this tactic did not work out very well for him. And his agent and Eustace King, who actually has a few other uh, very high quality uh, clients that, that he works with, is not going to be very happy with the way that he uh, managed this whole situation. Absolutely disgusting. And uh, let's move on to something else. Uh, tell me guys in the comment section below what you guys thought, uh, what you guys think of the whole Miller uh, situation. We all know it's going to be some people are going to e either agree with me or they're going to massively disagree with me and think that, you know, somebody it's something that you do as an age of 14, you're not going to do it, which I, I think is stupid because at the age of 14, I'm not going to make some kid lick a, a lollipop from a fucking urinal. You're just disgusting if you think that, you know, something that you did 14, you're not going to do when you're 20. I mean, yeah, for sure. I'm not going to do it like, but like, even when I was 14, I wasn't thinking about ever doing that to somebody because I'm not that fucked mentally. Like, come on, man. Uh, it's disgusting. And let's move on to the next thing. Uh, because I think we've talked about this well enough and Isaiah shout out to you, man. And your statement, uh, you are all the power to you, bro. And I hope you're able to, uh, continue to get the, the counseling you need and, uh, to continue to heal. Uh, and, uh, you will get over this. You'll become a better person, uh, with all the stuff that you went through. I promise, uh, everything will work out in the end. And, uh, the things that you've said have helped a lot. And, uh, for a lot of people that, you know, have gone through the exact same things as you, this will be, you know, an eye opener to a, a lot of other people as well there, Isaiah. So all the power to you, man. All right. So moving on to the next thing here, uh, we're going to be talking about Ryan O'Reilly, uh, and the trade rumors that are involving Ryan O'Reilly right now. Uh, that just started out yesterday, I think, uh, with the rumors about Ryan O'Reilly, maybe going to be traded, which is huge. Cause I mean, the blues are just not looking good right now. Uh, the blues are like dead last in the Western conference right now with a four, eight record. Only eight points are lower than the San Jose Sharks and the High Nine Ducks. I don't know who's seen this. I personally didn't. I personally didn't see this team struggling this bad. But Ryan O'Reilly's been off to a bad start. He's just haven't been getting the luck. You have Jordan Cairo not off to an amazing start to the season. Just a lot of bad luck for the Blues to start the season off. It's not looking too good for the team. So let's get into talking about Ryan O'Reilly and some, you know, some trade options for this guy. Uh, and honestly, this could be a massive pickup for just about any team that's going to be going for hard for the playoffs right now. Uh, one team that I could automatically have in mind is the Colorado Avalanche. Imagine Ryan O'Reilly on the Colorado Avalanche when this team is already deadly so far this year. They've already looked really good, even with a very weak lineup of, you know, Rodrigue, Newhook, and Caught as their second line. They're still looking very, very good. They're still having a very powerful season, and they're still looking really, really good. Imagine a team with, like, Luckin and Nate McKinnon ranting, and, and in your second line you have fucking Nikushkin, Laniskog, and Ryan O'Reilly, probably one of the best defensive lines in the entire league, or even have Ranton and Landeskog and Ryan O'Reilly. You probably have one of the best defensive lines in the entire NHL and probably one of the best top sixes in the NHL because you still have Rodrigue that would bump down the third line. You you just, in general, have a very, very strong team. And that's why, like, it's massive that they are having Landeskog and Nikushkin both on LTIR, I do believe. So you're saving a lot of money with that. And when you make a deal, I don't know who you would trade, of course, maybe a JT Confer to clear up some cap or whatever, but this would be such a huge move if you were able to get Ryan O'Reilly on the team. I think that would be something. I think another team that I would like to, to see them go after is maybe even the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, I mean, they are pretty tied up against the cap, but with Pacioretty on LTIR, it does make a little bit more space for them. Uh, might not be too bad of an idea uh, with Ryan O'Reilly going there, but I think that would just be a massive move for the Colorado Avalanche to be able to get uh, Ryan O'Reilly. A few other teams, uh, I heard Detroit Red Wings might be a, a, not a bad location for him since, you know, they do got Andrew Kopp as their second line guy, but I mean, Andrew Kopp's mostly kind of like a winger. Uh, and I think I would like to see him mostly as a winger. Then you could drop down Pew Suter a little bit more and you're not having to play Pew Suter so high up in your lineup. And especially with already Bertuzzo out of the lineup and you're not seeing him play very much. You already got Fabro out of the lineup. And then now you're just having Phillips Adina out of the lineup for a long time as well. Uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea for even the Detroit Red Wings to go after someone like Ryan O'Reilly uh, that could bring him a little bit of extra depth, especially if this Detroit Red Wings team is going to be a good team and they already look like they are. They had a rough start to start off the season, but they're starting to turn things around a little bit here with a 7-4-3 and record. It might not be a bad idea for them 
to go after someone like Ryan O'Reilly. And uh, I guess that's even the same because there's another player that we're going to be talking about as well, which is Bull Horvat. Uh, Bull Horvat has also been kind of talked about in the trade rumors as well. Not a lot of uh, things talking about trade rumor wise, uh, but uh, Bo Horvat and Ryan O'Reilly and talking about all these teams could basically be the same for either or. Uh, both Bo Horvat or Ryan O'Reilly could go to some of these teams. Now, for the Detroit Red Wings, I'd rather see them get Ryan O'Reilly instead. I think Ryan O'Reilly would be a way better guy for that team just in general, uh, just because I think he'd just be uh, kind of a good fit for that type of team. Maybe even the Rangers, I, I could see them going after somebody like that because, I mean, they need an extra center. It's not a bad idea for them to go after somebody like that. Uh, even the Leafs, you know, the Leafs could use some extra offensive depth. I would like to see them do something like that or even the Knights. Uh, there's not a lot of teams are, I guess, looking for a center, but I mean, any team would love to have an extra center on the team, even the Calgary Flames, um, but who knows what the hell the Calgary Flames are doing, man. Uh, I, you know, actually, that's a good lead. We, we could talk about the Calgary Flames because I want to talk about a few Canadian teams. We're going to be getting into the Vancouver Canucks a little bit later on because the fans were super cocky about their team and they're still doing trash, which actually, you know what? Let's talk about the Vancouver Canucks first of all because uh, the fans uh, that were watching the podcast uh, about two episodes back uh, we're like, oh, we're, we'll turn things around, guys. We're going to do really good. We're going to turn things around here in Vancouver land. And, uh, well, things have not turned around there yet in Vancouver land. They are still playing like absolute ass. 4-7-3 and three. in their last 10. They're 4-4-2. Four, four, and two. Uh, Still not playing very well. Not getting a lot of players. Uh, I mean, Patterson's been playing amazing this year. Miller been all right. Uh, but you have like players like Besser who hasn't been able to score a single goal this year. Uh, you know, you got guys like uh, Kuzmenko and Mikhilyev looking pretty good, but then you got just a horrible defense score in Demko, who has just been shitting the bed to start off this season. An 874 save percentage, a 4.02 goals against average. Uh, their defense just continues to be horrible, even though people tell me that their defense is better than most people expect it to be, even though it is actually trashier than what most people expected it to be. Um, it's just not looking very good in a uh, Vancouver Canucks fan, like really isn't. I've been enjoying Ethan Bear's game, but everything else there in Vancouver line has just been absolutely horrible. T tremendously horrible for this team they're getting offense they're scoring a lot of goals but everything else has just been absolutely horrible for the Vancouver Canucks and quite honestly very disappointing I mean it, the for the fans to keep saying that they, yeah this team could turn around guys this team could turn it around yeah we, we got this I don't know about that one guys I don't know if this team is going to end up turning things around because quite honestly it's it's not looking too good right now it really isn't for the Vancouver Canucks you know, there's not a lot of, you know, positive things going on about this team. And it just continues to kind of spiral down and continue to look very, very bad in Vancouver Canuck land. So there's a lot of bad things going on right now. And they definitely need, do need to turn things around. But I just don't see it. I just don't see it happening. I'm going to continue saying that with the Vancouver Canucks. I just really don't see this team happening. And I keep making fun of them in my streams because I think it's hella funny that, you know, Vancouver Canucks fans are like, oh, you know, the next few games, we're going to start winning here, guys. We're going to start winning these next few games. And then they continue to lose. And the only teams that they really defeat are the shitty teams. Like from last podcast, they beat the Ducks 8-5, to five, which is just a horrible team. They lost to the Nashville Predators. Uh, they beat the Ottawa Senators, which also suck. And then they lost to the Canadians. Now you got the Leafs, Bruins, Sabres, uh, and the Kings all coming up, which have all been pretty strong teams to start off the season. And then the Knights, like, you got a very tough schedule for the, the Vancouver Canucks. To be able to turn things around would be an absolute miracle right now. Uh, and quite honestly, I just really don't see it happening. I know Vancouver Canucks fans will be like, you're wrong. It's only the start of the season. You're wrong. But I, guys, I don't know what you're watching from this Vancouver Canucks team. I don't know what you're thinking. But this team does not look like it's going to be able to turn it around. To be pure and simple, it's not a team that I think will be able to turn it around anytime soon. So, you know, all the power to you. All the power to you. All the power to you to keep your hopes up with this team. But I definitely don't. Um, next, we'll talk a little bit about the Calgary Flames. Another little Canadian team that have been absolute trash. They are on a seven-game losing streak. I mean, this is just rough times with the Calgary Flames. Uh, they weren't even, I think they were in my power rankings last week. They have just completely moved themselves out of my power rankings because of how bad they have been. Uh, just both defensively, offensively, they are sucking ass. Uh, they are, we're off to a hot start, but no, you're not really seeing Nazem Kadri produce too much points. 
the depth is sucking ass. Like there's just so much going wrong in and in, 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 in flame land. Markstrom not playing very good. Vladdor not playing great. Uh, you know, like I said, the defense is just sucking. They're not scoring enough goals. Of course, Lindholm, who knew? He was not going to be very good without Goudreau and Kachuk. Who knew? <laughs> Fucking goddamn. Everyone boosting up him and thinking he's going to be the next big guy. And you're playing Dubé and Coleman up on your second line with Kadri. That's just a horrible recipe for disaster. Uh, Matt Japani's not playing that great to start off the season, which sucks for me because he's on my fantasy team. So... There is so much going wrong with the Flames. It is absolutely crazy. Now, do I think this team could turn around? Potentially, but man, it's not looking good. They're letting four goals in every single game. They're not scoring goals. There's, you know, they're not playing terrible defensively, but they're not playing great offensively. You know, they're letting in four to three goals per game and their goaltender's not standing on his head for them. It's going to be a very big problem, and especially here coming up, they got two home games, and then they're on a massive East Coast trip going to Tampa, Florida, the Flyers, Penguins. Like, those are going to be very, very tough games, and that's all the way to end off for, for November. That's from the 17th to the 29th. Almost 10-plus games, you're playing, like, seven games in those, like, 11, 12 days. Like, that's a lot of games you're going to be playing here, and you're going to be traveling for all those, and you're going to try to have to bounce back after losing seven straight is going to be a very, very tough time for the Calgary Flames, and uh, it's not looking very good for this team. And I think it's mostly because of the fact you lose Goudreau and Kachuk, two of your biggest players, like two of the best wingers in the NHL, and um, it's kind of showing that, you know, losing the two best wingers in the NHL is ended up being a very big hit to the Calgary Flames. And yeah, getting Uyghur and Huberto back are cool, but Huberto, he's not looking too good in the Flames uniform, man. He really isn't. We'll have to see how well he'll turn out for the rest of the season. But Huberto has been off to a very, very rough start to the season. And uh, we'll have to see if he'll be able to turn it around or not. We'll have to see. But I I'm curious if he'll be able to or not. Because I think that will be a very, very big thing if, he if he'll be able to do that or not. Uh, but I guess we'll have to see. Uh, I think one thing I would like to move on towards is uh, talking about some stats and some leaders around the NHL and points. Of course, Connor McDavid has been off to a incredible start to start off the season. 15 goals in just 15 games. Uh, can he, this guy, hit 50 and 50 this year? Honestly, I would love to see it. I would love to see if he'll be able to do something like that. I think that would be absolutely incredible if McDavid would be able to do something like that and I mean anything is possible with McDavid I mean even like the 50 and 36 or whatever Gretzky did I mean that would be also incredible to be able to see as well and I would love to see it but already 31 points this year for the Connor McDavid 27 for dry settle both of them are just off to incredible starts to get off this season uh, both players have been amazing another guy that's also been incredible Eric Carlson who's carrying a lot of the workload for the San Jose Sharks who knew that guy was still incredible my lord Eric Carlson's just having another you know he's been injured for the last few years has been able to show that pure offensive skill of himself and this year he is just looking incredible at the ripe age of 32 uh he's just been incredible to start off this season really just peppering points behind players and already has 10 goals in 15 games for the San Jose Sharks that is incredible and he's a defenseman ladies and gentlemen he's not even a forward he is the defenseman this year uh, he is just incredible playing a lot of minutes with the San Jose Sharks, a very shitty San Jose Sharks to note as well. And he has just been incredible uh, to say the least. Tage Thompson also been looking really good for the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, and then also Dominic Kubelik. I want to talk about a few players who've been popping off this year. Uh, Dominic Kubelik for the Detroit Red Wings. He's been incredible to start off this season. 16 goal or 16 points in 14 games. I thought this pickup was incredible. For the uh, Detroit Red Wings a while back because he was a good player in the uh, Blackhawks line and just had a rough few years to end off. You know, the last two years weren't amazing. His first year in the NHL was incredible. And now he's looking like he's really resurging and getting back that offensive, you know, potential that he did have with the Chicago Blackhawks. And he's looking really, really good right now for the Detroit Red Wings. And he only signed for $2.5 million. And you have a guy that's a point per game player. That is absolutely incredible. What a great pickup by Stevie Y. And I think he's been absolutely incredible to start off this year. And another player that I do want to talk about as well that I've seen is Gabriel Verlardi. Uh, 15 points in 16 games, 10 goals uh, to start off the season. He's playing up on the top line with Kopitar and uh, Kempe right now. He has just been bloody amazing. 
Uh, he's been really good, scoring a lot of goals. Even Fiala got bumped down because of how good Velarde has been uh, to start off this season. So just some real great offensive uh, showcase there from him. And we're going to be talking about the LA Kings a little bit later on because they moved themselves into the power rankings. So we get to talk about them. So I guess that's a perfect segue. Let's get right into talking about the uh, the power rankings because I think that's definitely something we're going to be talking about. And this was a big, big, big week. Uh, for the power rankings because there was a lot of teams that moved up. We have a new teams that, that is at first place. Uh, we have a lot of new teams that are really in the power rankings for the first time. So let's get right into this. All right, so let's get into the power rankings here for this upcoming week. As at 16th, we got the Detroit Red Wings uh, up here at the first time. Uh, now, there's a lot of teams that did drop out, few teams that did drop out. Uh, the Philadelphia Flyers, uh, picks for Penguins, Washington Capitals, uh, the Buffalo Sabres, and also the Calgary Flames. We all know why Calgary Flames lost seven in a row. They were at uh, eight last week and they have massively dropped down in the power rankings it's absolutely insane so they dropped out massively but i really like the detroit red wings at this spot they've been looking really really good putting along a pretty good string of games right now their last 10 they're five four and one uh they've just been playing really good you know they're getting some really good offensive you know uh, potential out of the league larkin has been amazing to start off this season uh you know they have lost their last two games uh, but they did defeat the Capitals, Islanders, and Rangers uh, before losing the last two against both the Canadians and the Rangers. So the Red Wings have been looking really good, uh, and they've been a really strong team, so that's why they're up here at 16th. Next up, we got the Toronto Maple Leafs making it back into the power rankings. I think this is their very first time being in the power rankings this upcoming year. Uh, they've been playing pretty strong defensively, and they've had a pretty strong amount of games, uh, being the Flyers, Bruins, and the Hurricanes, and they lost to the Knights in overtime. But the, the Leafs have been looking really good. They've been stringing uh, together some wins, even though they have lost both Samsonov and Matt Murray to injuries and going with uh, some guy named Pizzionio and uh, Calgren as the starters now moving forward. So it's kind of sketchy looking for their goaltending, but we'll have to see uh, if the Leafs will be able to stand uh, tall, even with the uh, the no goaltending that they got going on right now. But moving on at 14th, we got the Winnipeg Jets, who have been stringing along a pretty good amount of wins right now as they are on a three-game winning streak in the Jets. They've been honestly looking pretty strong, even though they've been, you know, most of the teams that they have beaten have been kind of the weaker end teams in the Arizona Coyotes, Canadians, Blackhawks, and the Stars. Uh, I mean, the Stars have been pretty strong, but I decided to throw them up here because they've been, you know, stringing together some good wins. They've been playing really well, um, playing a really good defensive game, and they're high up in the stands right now, so that's why they're up at 13th. Uh, moving on, to, or at 14th, and at 13th, we got the New York Rangers who moved down eight spots last week. They were at, uh, what was it, six, and they moved down massively. There's a lot of teams that did fall down hard, and one of them was the New York Rangers. Uh, the Rangers have just not been playing very well over the last few games. They haven't really been playing too well defensively. Uh, offensively, they haven't been amazing. Shesterkin hasn't been their guy to start off this season. Uh, since the last podcast, they lost the Bruins, Red Wings, Islanders, and the Detroit Red Wings as well. So they have not done very well since uh, the last podcast, only really being the Red Wings 8-2. So maybe they'll start rallying back some wins, uh, but they definitely fallen down a bit in our power rankings all the way down to 13th. And next up at 12th, we got the Edmonton Oilers who moved down eight spots. Uh, they moved up to fourth last week, but now they're all the way down at 12th, mostly because, well, they just have not been playing very well. Jack Campbell has not been their guy. He has not been playing very well. The defensive team has just not been playing great. Uh, they took a loss to the Panther or the Caps. Uh, they lost to the Carolina Hurricanes just recently as well. They have just not been playing very well in their last few games, especially on this East Coast trip. They've been struggling massively and not playing very well, and especially against the loss against the Caps, which the Caps barely had any good defensemen on their team, and they took a massive L to that team. So they have not been looking very good nor very strong. So uh, that's why they have dropped so massively down to 12th. Next up, we got the Los Angeles Kings who are at 11th and up here for the very first time. Like I was talking about, the LA Kings have been looking very, very good. Offensively, they've been killer this upcoming season. Defensively, they haven't been too strong with Quick and Peterson not playing too amazing. But Vlardi, Fiala, Kopitar, they've been having a lot of strong pieces so far out of the team this year. Uh, their last few games, they beat the Panthers, the Wild, and the Blackhawks. So they have been stringing together some big wins and putting themselves in a pretty good spot right now in the Pacific Division. Just second right behind the Vegas Golden Knights. 
far away from the Vegas Gold Knights, but they are at, uh, you know, second in the Pacific Division, not looking too bad. And a team that is just right behind them are, is the Seattle Kraken, who are on a five-game winning streak, uh, and they're up here for the very first time at number 10. I've been loving the Seattle Kraken. It's been incredible what the Seattle Kraken have been able to do, quite honestly. Absolutely incredible. They've been playing really well, strong defensively and putting some good points together. Their entire team has been very strong offensively, whether you're talking about Burakovsky getting off to an amazing start, Baneer's looking amazing, Schwartz, Eberle, the goaltender Martin Jones has been stepping up massively for the Seattle Kraken and their last few games they've been playing quite strong uh, they face up against the Penguins Flames, Wild, Penguins again and the Predators all defeating those teams in pretty good fashion as well and playing really strong against all those teams so the Kraken so far are looking really really good to start off the season and been putting together some really strong games uh, and they're, that's their first time being there. So hopefully they'll be able to stay there for a good little bit. We'll have to see. Uh, and number nine, we got the Florida Panthers. They moved up two spots as well. The Panthers have been stringing together some good wins and been playing pretty strong. They are second in the Atlantic Division right now. Uh, since the last podcast, they beat the Sharks, the Kings, and the Ducks and the Hurricanes. So they've been stringing together some big wins as well. They got some big games coming up against the Oilers tomorrow, the Capitals, Stars, and the Flames. So they got some big games coming up as they really don't have to go anywhere. They're playing old home games. Uh, so this will be a good chance for them to continue to gain some momentum and continue to get some big wins. But Kachuk did get suspended a little while ago for being a D-bag like he usually is. But uh, Kachuk's been off to an amazing start for Hagee. And Spencer Knight has been a big, big guy so far. Bur uh, Bobrovsky has been struggling to start off the season. But Spencer Knight has been stepping up massively so far for the Florida Panthers. And at number 8, we got the Colorado Avalanche who just went off to Finland beating Columbus Blue Jackets both of those times. And then also beating the Nashville Predators in a very, very dominant game. They still have a very weak team. They don't even have Nakush or Lanniskog or Gerard or Bowen Bryan but they are still playing very well Gorgiev has been amazing so that's why they're moving themselves up to number eight and the next team on this list we got the New York Islanders at seventh moving up eight spots uh, one of the biggest risers out of everyone uh, the New York Islanders have been a surprise to me and I think a surprise to a lot of people right now as Lane Lambert's really been able to get a lot of you know Nelson Barzell Noah Dobson's been looking amazing and not just that when you're getting amazing goaltending out of both Seorkin and, and a little bit out of Varlamov you're definitely going to have big success and the New York Islanders have been looking incredible to start this season off and that's why they have moved themselves up quite high up to seventh and next team we got is the Tampa Bay Lightning who have been okay they've been struggling a little bit taking some losses from both the Hurricanes and the Oilers but they got some big games where I think they'll be able to rally back and that's why I'm keeping them or moving them up one spot up to six uh, and then next up we got the Dallas Stars who are at fifth which honestly the Dallas Stars are staying at the same spot they've been at since what the start of this yeah they've been at the fifth spot and they haven't moved up or down uh, since the start of the season and that's just because they've been a consistently good team you know they've been winning some games losing some games here and there but they've just been overall a very consistent team over the start of the season and still looking very very strong and another team that moved up a lot of spots is the New Jersey Devils who are right now on a killer winning streak eight games in a row and that's why they're up at number four because they are just been an absolute incredible team could even be up at three but I still want to see a little bit more from them and honestly they've been beating some great teams um, I mean, they, the last few games, the Oilers, the Flames, they beat them two times in a row. The Sens, they beat easily. Uh, but we'll have to see how well they do against, you know, once they go up against. I mean, they got a really easy schedule to start off the season. You got the Coyotes, Canadians, Leafs coming up. Oilers again. Really not facing very many hard, hard teams until you, you go into the next year. So the Devils just got to take advantage of all these teams and just continue to pile on the wins. That's that, That's what good teams do. Pile on the wins against the weaker teams so you can get higher up in the stands when you're facing up against the tougher teams. You know, you're not taking as big a losses. But the, the Devils have been absolutely incredible and they've been playing a really strong game. At number three, we got the Carolina Hurricanes, who also just been absolutely incredible, still continuing to play a really strong game. Martin Natchez looking incredible for the team and has been a big guy for the team. Uh, at number two, we got the Boston Bruins, who at the first two uh, power rankings of the year have been at number one. They have finally moved down a spot as they've been pretty good. Still two-game winning streak, been very strong. They haven't been losing a lot of games. Plus, they got Charlie McAvoy back in the lineup. But the team that takes the cake this week is the Vegas Golden Knights, who are right now on a nine-game winning streak. 
streak, ladies and gentlemen, and they have been absolutely incredible. Jack Eichel has just been an absolute stud. Who knew? Uh, Chandler Stevenson, Alex Petrangelo, just so many guys have been amazing for the Vegas Gold Knights and have been a big offensive contributors for this team as well. So there is your week uh, of uh, power rankings, the brand new week of power rankings. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. And I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast because this was a lot of fun once again to make. Probably next week we're going to have another special guest join me for the next episode. So for right now, guys, thank you very much for watching. Make sure to go check out Spotify and Apple Podcasts if you'd like to listen to this podcast audio-wise. It'll be very much appreciated. Go follow it. Give it a you know five-star rating, all that cool stuff. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and that like button as well if you're watching it here on YouTube. And I'll see you guys all in the next one. Adios. Amigos.